when people do that and say identities you have you have identities these are all your identities no i have one identity so i noticed something interesting across my radar um but apparently this week as of this recording is peer review week now for those of you who may not be familiar um to do scientific publications and for the critique and improvement of articles, um, every article that is submitted has to go through a process called peer review, which is to say author submits to a journal, the editor of the journal sends the article out, um, or the prospect of an article out to multiple experts of that, um, field or of that topic. Um, and in interdisciplinary things, more than one expert, uh, one, more than one topic field that, uh, as expertise represented most of the time. And gets the feedback from the reviewers later. The reviewers are the ones who are doing the peer review because these are people who are your ex or who are your peers in the field reviewing your work. Um, and saying, is it suitable for publication? What things did you miss? You might want to write it this way. You might want to write it that way. Um, a lot of critiques on fundamentals and peer review is actually extremely important to um to making sure what is put out is good scientific quality it certainly has its flaws i've notably been very critical of that myself a few places that peer review has some horrific flaws um and if you saw a couple of articles that i have done um critiquing articles in nature that would be an example of where i saw peer review failed spectacularly because it allowed something through that was logically flawed um which is amazing to me that they had allowed something through that's utterly logically flawed. So I saw this and then I saw what the theme of peer review week is. So this has apparently been going on for like six years, but I saw what the theme of peer review week is identity in peer review. And that immediately raised my antenna because you all know very well that I don't think very highly of a lot of critical theory um, and the like. And I think it, a lot of critical theory and critical race theory are profoundly anti-science um, in a lot of ways. And there is a whole video on that on this channel, Critical Race Theory is Anti-Science, on my channel. You can go find out why I say it's anti-science and break it down for you. <clears throat> but um, so I noticed this and I mean, flipping through here, you can see just about everybody connected with the scientific publishing, different publishers, are talking about it and peer and for peer reviewers thank you yes you do a great job i i do that myself and i appreciate the thanks because i am a peer reviewer myself um dedicated highlighting the theme of identity yeah um all those kinds of things so i i know this is there's a lot of this going on this week and actually um this is the organization right here peer of course it just updated um this is <laughs> this is just the 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 organization right here. Peer Review Week, and again, this will all be linked for everybody, so don't worry. Um, lot to do on this list. So introducing peer review, this kind of stuff, and identity in peer review, building a bridge of empathy, um, early career. Yeah, there's a lot going on this week with all. Oh, wait a minute, what did I just see? Ha! Okay, note to self that that's going on later this week. Um, for those who might want to see something interesting. Uh, do, 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 do. and maybe mock mercilessly. I don't know. Um, depending on what it is, I have no idea. Could be good. Could be crazy. Um, do, 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 do. okay. So there's a lot of that going on, and so this is a thing that's been around for a little while now. Although I only heard about it recently, and of course I've been five years since having my PhD. Anyway, um, so this ought to be interesting. Um, but I wanted to highlight. I haven't seen a whole lot talking about it and specific thoughts from publishers yet because a lot of the commentators in here are publishers or professional science organizations, which you all know how I feel about AGU right now. Um, so let's go in here. So this comes from PLOS, um, and PLOS is a journal. Um, pub PLOS is a bit like Nature. It publishes many different journals, actually, um, here. But the editorial team in here posted their thoughts on identity and peer review. And this is the one that I wanted to comment on for this video um, to get across my thoughts on some things when I was flipping through this. So this is written by PLOS's editorial director. Identity and peer review, looking forward, looking back, uh, on September 20th, 2021. Peer Review Week didn't exist when I got my start in STM publishing. 
S2021 celebration of this tenacious tenet of quality control and scholarly communication has me meandering down memory lane. Back in the day of small-scale publishing in Australia, we were still mailing unsolicited hard copy manuscripts to prospective peer reviewers. Editorial feedback was scribbled in the margins, and everything was tracked in a desk-sized, color-coded ledger. Ah, how I loved its color coding. Back then, consideration of identity, the theme of peer review week this year, was extremely limited. Does the invitee have the right subject expertise? Do they work with the authors? Have I sent them any other manuscripts recently? DEI was not an acronym that any of us could have defined, even though diverse perspectives, discussion, and collaboration have always been key to strengthening scientific progress. Well, for one thing, I didn't know that's how they used to do it, although I imagine it was something like that. So <laughs> it's nice that it's done electronically now. Um, let's see. Does the invitee have... The... So, I mean... That's not necessarily limited, you know, um, right? Subject matter expertise, uh, you know, what quality of expert do you have um, kind of thing? What, what are their credentials? What are their experience levels? Um, all those kinds of things should be considered too. So those kinds of questions are pretty narrow and she probably meant them as um, examples. So we'll just put that there. Fast forward two decades, a new era of peer review. Fast forward two decades and DEI frameworks and, and approaches are rightly being centered in scholarly communications discussions, resulting in better benchmarks and knowledge sharing that give publishers and other organizations the means to better track and hold ourselves accountable for creating a genuinely inclusive academic system. <sighs> okay. Rightly being centered. How do you know they're right? How do you know that that's the right thing to center in this? And I, you know why I say that? Because I detailed on this channel the research around DEI efforts in organizations and how much of a failure they are in actually in actually succeeding at the goals they aim, which for organizations, it's in hiring and retention. Um, so tell me, why is it right that you're centering them in scholarly communications discussions when the scholarship on the subject with respect to the things that matter, which is hiring and retention for organizations, at least, um, don't say that they say that they pretty much don't work. Just a question. Um, let's see here. Yeah, no, it, I mean, I, I, for organizations, at least the, the literature, and I went through it on this channel, the literature shows that it doesn't work for a lot of reasons um, here. So I don't see why centering DEI frameworks and scholarly communication is going to improve things. Do you have any evidence of that at this point? Odds are you probably don't. But enhancing diversity necessitates establishing identity, and many of us are struggling with the practicalities. Our go-to databases for sourcing peer reviewers don't include reliable demographic indicators. We make clumsy inferences based on names and locations while trying to be mindful of our own unconscious biases. We manually trawl non-traditional sources. New lists of historically underrepresented researchers are popping up all the time, but they are yet to be centrally curated. And what about GDPR? Doing it right takes more time, and no one wants peer review to take longer than it already does. What is GDPR? I've never actually heard of that. Never heard of that, so I'm just curious. Oh, General Data Protection Regulation. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, that's an EU thing. Okay. Um, here's the thing. If you truly want to anonymize this, and just let it be about the experts when you're selecting things. And you supposedly have said database of things and databases that you're adding to, perhaps as more people are publishing, you can... Uh, my, my question is, why are we not just using the incredible computing technology we've developed to actually, oh, I don't know, randomly select reviewers? You know, you could very easily have a computer script cross-reference the name of the authors, the names of the authors submitting versus this reviewer database. And then also cross-reference, okay, what are the, what are these authors published with, um, you know, who are, who are reviewers that the authors of this paper that's been submitted published with? I don't understand this. We have the incredible computing technology for this, and that would get rid of your problem of dealing with unconscious bias, which also, by the way, doesn't work. Um, unconscious bias training is also meaningless. Again, go back to the video on is diversity training effective and the answer is not. 
Um, yeah, um, this might be a problem actually solved by computing, to be truthful, not by just manually searching and wanting to have, um, manually searching and wanting to account for demographics as you search. Despite the challenges, we all as publishers owe a duty to trust and integrity of the scientific record to be actively involved in bringing the unique identities, bringing the distinct identities and unique perspectives, knowledge, and diversity of all researchers to the process. Doing it right takes organizational commitment, including investment to extra resources and new ways of working. At PLOS, a new DEI-focused workflow for recruitment of editorial board members ensures we're casting a wider net. Establishing a baseline so we can track improvements is also underway. A DEI-focused source of EBMs, focused survey of EBMs, will be deployed soon. And at our editorial board member code of conduct, headlines, inclusion, and bias minimization. Okay. Um, Identities here. I've already said the fact that I hate that phrase, frankly. Um... And this is concerning that you're thinking of, you're, you're tell, talking about identity in peer review, but then you're going to identities. And I know usually what it means when we're going into identities, you're going into the social identities of race, sex, gender, what have you, which is remarkably dehumanizing. So I immediately have a problem with that um, in here. And again, a lot of your problem of trying to eliminate biases and what have you would be eliminated if you could just have random selection of reviewers cross-referenced with the authors and anybody the author might have worked with, which you could possibly do, actually, if you are taking advantage of the fact that ma the vast majority of journals are now online and you could have somebody smart with computer programming to figure out how to scrape things so that you could do that without ever having the editor touch it. That way you can get new, you can get new, you can get new student, you could get new professionals into doing peer review. You could get very different professionals who've never published before in doing peer review. And if you're doing interdisciplinary stuff, if you're doing interdisciplinary publications, then you can cross-reference multiple journals at the same time. You would just take some creative coding and for crying out loud, all the, almost all the submission processes for journals now are online submissions. You could easily, you know, I know, I know the, f the amount of, the amount of checkboxes and things that, did you do this? All that, that I have to put in. You could easily have that add some more checkboxes of, is this research interdisciplinary? Or you could have the program guess that from the author team that's there. Say, like in some of my cases, I've written alongside of hydrologists, climate scientists, ecologists, agriculture specialists, could have, draw experts from all of those fields on the, to, to review the paper by cross-referencing a database. You would never have an editor having to deal with the bias problem ever again. Just a thought. <clears throat> that and again like the DEI stuff I, I'll be curious because I, I don't know that it's ever been implemented but um, at least with respect to organizations again is the diversity training effective um, research says no Core tenant for PLOS has been to increase transparency at all stages of review to offer inclusive forms of assessment for the research and reviewers involved in publishing. Authors who have published in our journals are often invited to peer review. This is true. If you publish, if you publish in a journal, that is a tendency that they go back to you to help with peer review. Um, researchers at institutions with whom PLOS has partnered are other are another potential source of new expertise. So we've been focusing on expanding our global footprint. Our newest journals and partnership with TCC Africa are just two examples of this effort. And the transparency of PLOS's manuscript pro processing where peer reviewers can choose to sign their reports and authors can choose to publish their peer review commentary confers visibility, seeing those with whom one identifies make, making a valuable contribution to a community encourages participation. Okay, so in other words, oh, it's a visibility thing. So seeing, so in other words, seeing that it's another woman who's, in my case anyway, seeing that it's another woman who's peer reviewed or something like that is supposed to encourage participation on my part? Except for my, and this is going to sound strange. I know I'm a woman in science, but I don't think of myself that way. I'm a scientist, and I don't really care if it's a woman who reviews my work or not. It doesn't matter to me. Um, 
And apparently they forget that with this nonsense about representation, because I have always wondered, you know, is diversity to, to these folks really about diversity of thought and diversity of viewpoint, or is it solely about diversity of race, sex, gender, what have you? And all of that's good. I'm fine with it. I want to see more of it. I'm not saying no. But if it comes without making sure there's also diversity of thought, diversity of viewpoint really represented, because there's no guarantee that just because you have different people of different races or different genders or different sexes or what have you, that they're going to think about a problem differently, then it doesn't matter too much. <clears throat> Celebrating peer review will still be around long after I've left scholarly publishing. There will be more, ever more ways of doing it, formal and informal, pre and post publication, I blinded and unblinded, facilitated by ever more platforms and technologies, a diversity of models, which will hopefully be mirrored by diversity of participatory identities. Again, I hate that phrase, identities, because the real thing is I have one identity. It's encapsulated in my name. My name is the root and the root point of everything that is my identity. The the climate scientist, the 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 artist that I am, the person who I am talking to you all here, all of that is encompassed in my name, and all that and more for that matter. I don't need multiple identities, and I am not. I I find it remarkably dehumanizing when people do that and say identities. You have you have identities. These are all your identities. No. I have one identity. And in the case of me doing peer review or me writing an article, I'm a scientist in that moment. However the future of peer review takes shape, it is important to continue highlighting and celebrating the individual contributions of that reviewers make every day. PLOS is thankful to all the reviewers that work with us, and we look forward to continuing to learn from their individual experiences and tackling challenges in peer review together. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I agree with that. Thank you. I appreciate the thanks, Plus, although I've never reviewed anything for you, I don't think. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I um, was curious if there was any comments that were down here. Um, I don't see any. No, I don't see any. Oh, wait. What's this? Oh, well, that's a sharing thing. Hold on. I thought there would be comments, but because they leave the thing here in the comment, but obviously they don't, they don't want people to see publicly what the comments are, which is interesting. But that's that. I wanted to point out another group actually put out this, um, do I have it? Um, yeah, another group put out, another reason this caught my attention is another group put out this, um, survey about diversity and inclusion. And I'm going to point out something that's interesting here for, for the cult folks, um, here that's, um, not necessarily a good thing um, here. What kinds of diversity are important in peer review? Select all that apply. Uh, sex, gender, race, ethnicity, age, career level, visible, visible minority, immigrant minority, ability or differently abled, disease, in socioeconomic status, literacy and numeracy level, geography, religion, language, First Nations, indigenous people, vulnerable populations, expertise, area specialties, neurodiversity. You notice one thing that's missing from this list is actually viewpoint diversity. Viewpoint diversity on the issues and topics that would be in an article. Um, and I think I talked about it the other day and something else was the idea of the adversarial collaboration where you have two, two people who are very differently, uh, very different uh, viewpoints on a topic actually working together on it. Um, something that I think would be interesting, actually. And I mean, you might be able to encompass viewpoint diversity a teeny bit in this expertise areas and specialty, but... That doesn't really, because if somebody of the same expertise area, they might have the same opinion on, on something and whether or not it's right. Um, same perspective of looking at something. So I noticed there's no viewpoint diversity considered here. Um, so that's that's disappointing to see. So, I mean, it is really... I'm, I'm really disappointed in the identity and peer review crowd from what I've seen so far, because this is a whole week thing. And I don't know that I'll get the time to watch the rest of... Um, the other stuff in peer review week's list here, but, um, I, I'm disappointed because, you know, identity is so much more than the dehumanizing identities that people, that, that some of the, some of these folks here want. And it is absolutely discouraging to see that. And I, I don't see any actual consistent interest in viewpoint diversity here. So we'll see what they have to say. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching a little bit more of the rest of this this week, and you might see some tweets from me about it. But um, that's it for now. 
Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button on the way out the door. Comment below and tell me your thoughts. What do you think of this identity and peer review thing going on? Um, yeah, share the video. Subscribe to the channel, all that good jazz. And don't forget to come on over and become a supporter of SciWorthy on Locals at SciWorthy.Locals.com. And you get to become a supporter there. And you become a supporter there and you get to interact with myself many other and many other scientists and scientists, science enthusiasts. We're going to do a SciWorthy conversation coming up soon. And that is something only available for local supporters um, of SciWorthy. And that has... I, I don't know what we've done. I don't think we've decided on the topic yet. But that short conversation show is only available for supporters of cyworthy.locals.com. Anyway, that's it for now. Until next time, I hope you stay curious.